Hi, Larry Stewart here with 4constructionpros.com at ConExpo ConAg 2020. We're in the CAT booth, meet Ryan Neal. He's product application specialist for large excavators, and we're ta talking about the 395 today. Yes, sir, we the are. All new three, 395. Talked about a 10%, up to a 10% improvement in productivity with this machine. How do you get to that? Well, we did quite a, quite a few things, actually, to get to that point. One is um, our customers ask for bigger, faster, stronger, and they always want more productivity. They want bigger machine, larger buckets. So what we've done is this is the direct replacement for the 390F. So we have the 395 now because it's grown in weight and sheer size. So having a bigger counterweight to more steel in the machine allows us to put uh, bigger buckets on the machine with more productivity in that way. With um, increased swing torque has made a big difference as well. So we have a dedicated swing pump back on this machine. So it, it's its own closed loop circuit. And so we're really excited about that. I feel some applications will get more than 10% when you're in a high swing application. I feel that uh, larger buckets, if you're getting dirt to the truck faster with bigger buckets, you're going to see increased productivity. Yeah. We've done a lot of things else to help with that 10%. Not only that's just the sheer mechanics of the machine, um, with the standard technology on is going to help a bunch. And we've talked about grade and payload, and we've had this out since the launch of our next-gen excavators, but you think about loading trucks and productivity, you think about a 395, these large machines, and being able to keep track of the amount of material that you're putting in a truck all day long, the days of the silver load count clicker are gone because the machine keeps track of that. We, down to tons per hour, tons per gallon, uh, total truck count, bucket count, uh, fuel efficiency. It gives us a lot of data right on the display that the operator can look at at the end of the day, during the day, we can extract that data from the side of the monitor or we can also pull it off a of vision link back in the back office where the, you know, the production manager wants to know how much material was moved during the day. It's all, we have three different ways to pull that information. Any, any significant change in transportability of this machine? No, so obviously that just depends on what state you're in, you know, as to how you can haul it. But no, it, it's, the sheer physics of moving it will be very similar to moving. Same the, number the of loads and That's all yep. that sort of thing. Yeah, maybe the boom and stick and counterweight all have to come out or maybe just the counterweight and stick and bucket. Yeah, It just okay. depends on, on, your, on your local conditions. I see, okay. And I, I diverted our conversation away from the technology. Were there other technology issues we should address? Yeah, so we have, uh, we've built in safety features through our entire next-gen hex platform, which is great. And it's the e-fence features, which is preventing the front linkages from hitting potentially something above you or something below you, swinging, as well as the getting into the cab with cab avoidance. And those are standard features on this machine as well. Uh, the grade control, the upgrade ability to go to 3D. When we have standard 2D grade control on this machine, which if you're digging on, you know, we're moving mass dirt, say we're stripping overburden and we have a 10 foot cut. The operator can put a 10 foot cut into the display and I'm gonna know where that bucket tip is at all times, whether I have two foot of cut or five foot of cut or whether I'm on grade on my 10 foot cut. It's so easy to upgrade to 3D with these machines because all of the backbone of the architecture's in there. We need to add a radio and the GPS receivers and the, then again the TD520 display, but it's so easy to upgrade to 3D. Think about why, why would I need 3D on a machine this size? And it comes down to, uh, one, if you're doing underground utilities, you know your proper depth and you have your full 3D design in there. Two, as simple as it's very common to see it in the overburden removal. Where sure. They want to maintain a 10-foot bench and, and a specific amount of material, and you have all that 3D right there for you. Right. There's a lot of information. Yeah. What other kinds of features should we talk about on this? Well, one thing, and again, it's the same cab from a 320 to a 395, but I think it's more important in a machine of this size, because you think about what a 395 does compared to a, a 320 or a smaller machine. The operator may be in and out of the cab often if they're laborer slash operator. That typically doesn't happen in a machine this size. So having the creature comforts of the cab, because it's their office all day long. It's 10, 12 hours a day, sometimes 24 hours a day, depending if it's a shift machine. You want to have that additional room and the creature features, really, because you've got your water bottle and your cup of coffee and you've got your thermos and you've got your coat and your hard hat. And to be able to have room for all that stuff is it's tremendous. And it's it's giant leap forward from what we had previously. It's it, And again, to have that extra creature comforts of even your, your Bluetooth phone. You, know, you can talk, if it's allowed on the job site, hands-free talk on your phone, just like in your car, and, and the adjustability of the seats. and it, It's huge, huge, I think, makes more sense even so on these larger machines where the operator spends more time in the cab. Yeah, all right. Well, thanks, Ryan, so much. You I bet. wish you the best of luck with Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy the, the show. show. Yeah. When your dealer services your cat, they know there's a lot more riding on it than just you. Let's do the work.